But every now and then I go out and I want to I wanna meet people. I want to see cool things. And for example, comedy. I'm a huge fan of comedy. Not just performing it, but I love going to shows. I go to a comedy show every now and then alone. Now, I don't know if that sounds weird to you guys, but for me to do anything nowadays by myself, it's my crew, my other people that work for me, they freak out when I go places because they're always concerned for my safety. You know, what if someone tries to kidnap you? <laughs> well, they're gonna earn it. <laughs> I got into a fight with some of my team members and I said, you know what, I'm just, I'm going out. I bought myself a ticket and I went to go watch Chris Rock one night in concert. Now, I says, you know what? Maybe I can make my way backstage and I don't know, if I get lucky, maybe I'll say hi to him. I've always wanted to meet him. So I go to the side of the stage and I run into security. And I said, hey. He looked at me and said, Fluffy! <laughs> and when he did that, I said, hey, listen, I forgot my keys, I'll be right back. And the guy's like, yeah, keep going, get your keys, get your keys, get your keys. I'm like, oh my God, that shit worked. Just like that, I snuck backstage at a Chris Rock concert. Once I was behind the curtain, I was in my element. I knew where everything was. I knew where the food was. I knew where the dressing rooms were, where the bathrooms were. I'm walking around with a soda. People are coming up to me. You know, we didn't know you were gonna be here. I got a call last minute. <laughs> Looking for my keys. <laughs> I says, you know what? I got this far. I'm gonna push it. I want to meet him. I've always wanted to meet Chris Rock. It was not hard. Once I was back there, I just had to go to the dressing rooms. All I had to do was read the name on the door. I'm standing there in front of the door and I'm hyperventilating. Just <laughs> the door opens up and there's this man in there, this bodyguard who's just massive. I'm a big guy, but damn, he was huge. As soon as he opened the door, just <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic, big, grandote. And I'm standing there and I'm like, hi. And he's like, can I help you? Yes, my name is Gabriel, I'm a comedian. I know I wanted to see if I could say hi to Chris Rock, if that's possible. You say you're a comedian? Yes. Well, then you understand Chris is going over his material right now. He really ain't trying to talk to nobody. So I'll tell you what, player, if you want to come by after the show, you're more than welcome to. But right now, it's not a good time. Chris Rock is a busy man. <sighs> Can I wave? Excuse me? Can I wave? What you mean? Can I wave at Chris? I don't have to come in, can I wave? Chris Rock is in the room. He can hear the stupid conversation that's taking place. I know this because I can hear Chris Rock in the background. What's going on? Who's at the door? Move out the way. Yo, Chris, I got this, man. I got this. Move! All right. And the guy stands to the side, and now I'm looking at Chris Rock and he recognized me, and it freaked me out. Oh yeah, it freaked me out. He's like, ah oh, shit, look who it is, look who it is. It's the king of the Mexicans. Chris Rock called me the king of the Mexicans. For the rest of the show, everyone referred to me as El Chapo. <laughs> I'm in the middle of trying to deal with this whole situation with my son watching these videos and not going to work. And while I'm doing this, I get the most random phone call I have ever gotten. My publicist calls me up and she's like, Gabe, Snoop Dogg is looking for you. Excuse me? Snoop Dogg, you know, the, I know who Snoop Dogg is, but what do you mean he's looking for me? Well, he's looking for, is he looking for me or is he looking for me? 
He's a fan and he wants to interview you. Oh, cool. Sounds good. What is it? I think it's some type of podcast. I'm in. Can I bring Frankie? Absolutely. Cool. So I hang up the phone. I'm excited. I want to tell my son. I'm like, Frankie, I'm walking towards your room. I'll be at your door in three, two, one. Hey, all right, you're dressed. Good. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? Watch. We get in the car. And now we're off on this adventure to go do an interview with Snoop Dogg. You guys, let me tell you something. We get to the neighborhood and we're lost. The GPS says we're there, but we're lost. We're looking for a house and there's no house, just a big building. And so I'm like, this, this doesn't look like a podcast, really? So I pull up to the security gate. <laughs> Tap the button on the wall. <laughs> security desk, can I help you? Hey, security desk, my name is Gabriel Iglesias, and uh, uh, I think I'm here to do an interview with Snoop Dogg. Okay, one moment. Oh, okay, this is it. Good, good. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, this is going to be cool, right? <laughs> Sir? Yes. Yes, hi, there is no Gilbert Ignatius on file. What? Could there be another name? Another name? I don't know, a Fluffy maybe? And the gate starts to open. I'm like, oh my God, I'm officially in the rapper's world because my real name doesn't mean shit. So we drive in. And we're passing all of these reserved parking spaces. Reserve, 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 reserve. And we get to my space, which is basically an orange cone that has fluffy handwritten on it. And a bunch of other names crossed off. <laughs> so Frankie moves the cone, I park the car. <coughs> we walk into the building. My publicist is waiting for me, right? And she's like, Gabe, you made it. Frankie, how are you? Listen, I just finished talking to Snoop. <sighs> wow. He is everything you think he is and just a little bit more. He is so sweet. I cannot believe he was charged with double murder. <laughs> he told me to just walk you guys into the studio and he'll be right back. He said he had to go outside and get in the right headspace or something. I just, okay, cool. So she walks us into Snoop's studio. I'm thinking I'm there for a podcast. Come to find out it's for a TV show. Snoop has a TV show where he interviews celebrities. Everyone in the room is waiting for Snoop to return. You can hear the small talk. You know? <laughs> All of a sudden, everyone stands up. And I'm looking around like, what's going on? And I look at the door to see if Snoop's walking in and I don't see him. And I could see my son. I don't realize it, but Snoop is entering the room through a different door. I don't realize it till like the last second. I'm like, what are you? Oh! So I jump up, I push in my chair. I'm so nervous, I don't know how to address him. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I felt stupid. <laughs> Snoop walks over to me and he's so cool, you guys. He's so cool, he walks over to me and he grabs my hand. He's really strong. He pulls me in and he says, Yo, what it do, baby boo? How you feel? <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. Can I sit down? For sure. <laughs> I sit down. I look over. I see my son. My son's like, The difference between Snoop's show versus any other talk show I've ever done is that usually there's a person, like a producer or a director, who comes to you and gives you information, like how the show begins, topics you're going to cover, how you go to commercial, how you come back from commercial. I've spoken to no one. Snoop just starts talking, and at some point, they hit record. I'm waiting for action or a buzzer and something. Snoop just starts talking to me. Yo, what up, Big Fluff? <laughs> Big Fluff? Oh, that's it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Yo, you like music? Snoop, I love music. I love your music. Yeah, that's what's up. 
he opens up a laptop computer and then he hits play. And the next thing I know, we are listening to hardcore Mexican banda music. I mean hardcore. <laughs> and you can hear gunshots in the song. <laughs> and then a cow. <laughs> and the whole time Snoop is like, I love it when he go moo. I feel like he's messing with me because I'm Mexican, right? So I called him out. I said, Snoop, do you understand what you're listening to? And he said this, and it scared me. He said, gangster recognized gangster. <laughs> the reason why it scared me was because he was telling the truth. We were listening to actual Mexican cartel songs that don't play on the radio. And the fact that he knew that, the fact that his level of street knowledge in another language was that on point, I said, I gotta shut the hell up. <laughs> don't speak unless spoken to, that's the, that's the code. <laughs> Next thing I know, Snoop reaches under the desk and he pulls out the biggest blunt I have ever seen. Oh, this sucker was huge. As soon as he pulled out that freaking blunt, I got excited because I wanted to grab my cell phone, okay? I wanted to grab my cell phone so that I could take a selfie of Snoop in the background being Snoop. So while I'm fumbling, trying to get my phone, <laughs> Snoop starts talking to me again. Yo, Big Fluff. <laughs> yeah, what? Hit that while I hit this. The second I went like that, all of the cameras in the room, red light, red light, red light, red light, red light. My publicist is like, no! My son is like, yeah! After I performed in the Middle East, um, I had one of the longest flights of my life coming home. It's probably about 26 hour trip, okay? We left out of Kuwait and we had about four stops. It was long. When I got home, I was so tired, I, I turned on my phone to check my messages, and uh, I had a voicemail message from a guy by the name of Channing Tatum, okay? <laughs> now, for those of you not wooing, let me explain who that is. Channing Tatum is the new Hollywood hot guy. He's the guy that comes out on all these movies, really good looking, ripped. You know, he's making a lot of films. And there's a voicemail on there from him. Gabriel Iglesias, this is Channing Tatum. Please call me at your earliest convenience, blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I called him up. You know, Hello. I go, hi, this is Gabriel Iglesias. I'm calling for Mr. Channing Tatum. <laughs> he yells, Fluffy! <laughs> Hello? Oh, dude, man, I'm a huge fan. Hey, listen, bro, really quick. I only have like a minute. Look, bro, I'm doing a new movie, and I want to see if you're interested in reading and auditioning for one of the parts. I go, I go, sure, bro, I, I, I'd be happy to audition for, for uh, you know, for your movie. What's, what's it called? He goes, the movie's called Magic Mike. I was like, okay, Magic Mike, so you need a magician, you need an assistant, you want to saw me in half, what's going to happen? Actually, bro, the movie has nothing to do with magic. It's actually a movie about male strippers. I said, male strippers? He goes, yeah, male strippers. I said, you do know that this is Gabriel Iglesias, right? <laughs> he goes, you're funny, bro. Listen, we've already got the dancers, but we need somebody to play the DJ at the club. Will you audition for the part? I said, you know what, bro? I'm, I'll be there, okay? And just to let you guys know, because some people have asked me in the past, how come you're not in more movies? Because you have to audition. And I don't like auditions because they treat you like crap. Auditions are very cold and very just, they make you feel like shit. They seriously do. You work really hard to memorize all your lines and you show up and you try to do your thing and they cut you off really quick. You're in there and you're like, um, okay, so who am I reading? Hold on. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll hold on. Hey, how's it going? Don't talk to him. All right, no problem. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Um, quick question. How much energy do you want? You don't know? Um, that's why I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> And when you're done, you try to ask him more questions. Like, is this okay? Would you like me to go again? Thank you. Thank I've had my 
the fingers this so many times and it hurts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you're sitting in your car and you're crying. <sighs> They don't like me. It's a terrible feeling, so I don't like putting myself through that. But since I got a phone call from the guy, I'm like, all right, I hope it's a little bit different. So I show up to the audition. I'm sitting in the lobby, and it's funny because anytime there's an audition, everybody at the audition, usually they're looking for a specific type. And so everybody that's sitting there with me looks just like me. <laughs> everybody in there is big. Everybody's sitting there. Everybody's all happy and jolly and stuff. And we're all looking at each other, trying to outdo each other. Like, no, I look more like me than you do. You don't look like me. No, this is what they want. No, this is what they want. You know. <laughs> So the receptionist looks at me, she goes, Mr. Iglesias, they'll see you now. And I'm like, okay, cool, here we go, let's, let's see how this goes. So I start mentally preparing myself for the, you know, the problems that happen in there. I walk in, I don't say anything to anyone. I walk in, there's three people in the room, I close the door. And I just look over at the casting person who's sitting on her desk and I, hello. And her, the camera person and the person I'm reading with all jumped up and yelled, Fluffy! And they ran over to me and they started hugging me and pulling out camera phones. Now I'm taking pictures with them. Next thing you know, they call a the receptionist, Judy, get in here. And girl comes in. Now I'm taking pictures with four women. We're going back and forth. I'm like, this is different. <laughs> you know? And I go, wow, you know, this is very refreshing. Thank you. I says, who am I reading my part with? And the casting person says, this is a formality. They've always wanted you for the part. And they said, if you show it up, it's yours. So basically, we've already called your agent since you showed up. Really? Yeah, this is great. So I, I get to my car. My agent is blowing up my phone, right? And I answer the phone. I go, hello. He's like, dude, you nailed that audition. <laughs> what did you do? I was like, dude, I took pictures. <laughs> Way to take those pictures, bro. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm on the set of the movie Magic Mike. The movie is directed by a, a director named Steven Soderbergh, who's an amazing, amazing director. He's done a lot of great films. And, of course, Channing Tatum's in the movie. In addition to him, there's an actor by the name of Matthew McConaughey who's attached to the movie. I'm a huge fan of Matthew McConaughey, okay? When I found out I was going to work with him, I was so excited. You know, and people say, really? You get excited? You get starstruck? Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm a comedian, not an actor. <laughs> so I show up. And immediately they send me to the makeup trailer that's parked outside. So I go inside the makeup trailer, I sit down, they start working on my hair, they start putting makeup on me, and in comes Matthew McConaughey. And he sits down in the chair next to me, and I start freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. Oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. And now I, I decide to introduce myself before I did or said something stupid, right? So I look over at him and I say, excuse me, Mr. McConaughey. How you doing? My name is Gabriel Iglesias. I'm going to be playing the part of Tobias, the club DJ, and I just wanted to say hello, and it's an honor to work with you. And in my head, I'm like, I hope he's the same guy. I hope he's the same person from the movies. I hope his voice is the same. I hope his accent's the same. And he looks at me, and he says, all right. <laughs> How you doing there, big man? You doing good? I'm doing good. All right. And I'm spazzing out. <laughs> And they pull my ass out of the trailer and they take me onto the set. And uh, the majority of the shots in the movie Magic Mike are shot inside of a strip club, okay? It's on a stage and I'm very comfortable up here. But the cool part for me is I'm on the side of the stage inside of a DJ booth, so I don't have any worries. The director comes up to me and he says, listen, Gabe, you got all your speaking roles in the film, but in addition to that, you are the key background in every shot when it comes to the dancers. He goes, the guy on stage is the eye candy, but you're the guy that provides the ear candy and you need to express yourself and give me energy. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Next thing I know. All right, everybody, here we go. And quiet on the set. Hit and action. All of a sudden, the dancing. <laughs> Dancer comes out, camera starts panning just like that one, right? And all of a sudden, I'm in my DJ booth and I start DJing it up. <laughs> <laughs> The director comes out from behind the camera, crosses the stage, and gets in my face. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Give me more. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Quiet on the set and action. <laughs> and I take off.
The movie comes out. I attend the screening of the film with my girlfriend at Warner Brothers Studios. We're sitting there, and we're waiting for that part to come up. And I tell her, baby, it's coming. It's coming. Watch. Sure enough, the camera starts panning. And you see the dancer. You can't even see his head. All you see is his body all freaking ripped and moving. And in the background, in the DJ booth, you cannot see any of the DJ equipment because it's all below the line of the camera. All you see in the background is some chubby pervert in a box having the time of his life. And my girlfriend's like, oh, you're gay. I guess so. <laughs> and that was my Hollywood debut right there. And in addition to that, there was a couple of other things that happened in this movie that I got to share because you're never going to hear about them in a DVD bonus feature. <laughs> One of the characters in the movie, his name in the movie is Big Dick Richie. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. He's played by an actor named Joe. Joe's, Joe's a cool guy, cool guy. I, I met him out, you know, uh, we became buddies after the movie and uh, nice guy. He's big, he's ripped, okay? And his whole thing is he comes out on stage and he's dancing behind a silhouette. So all you see is the shadow of him dancing for three minutes. And after the third minute, he grabs his G-string and this is how he finishes his performance. He tears it off, exposing a shadow of, you know, <laughs> Now, in real life, Joe does not possess. It's more like, you know, <laughs> Don't laugh too hard, that's most of us, okay? Now, because they needed to make this scene happen and we're shooting it in Hollywood, they made a phone call to an adult film company that was up the street and they got a hold of their props department. And they said, basically, you know, what we need is about 45 impressive male rubber parts to be brought down to the set of the movie Magic Mike so we can attach one of them to an actor for a scene. It took maybe 30 minutes for some guy to show up with a big trunk on the set. And you could just tell he did not belong. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And Channing Tatum saw him and he goes, are you the guy? I'm the guy. <laughs> and he brought him inside the house and he got all the actors around the kitchen table and he told the guy, he says, listen bro, dump it out right here, all of it. And the guy opens up the trunk and he dumps out all of these big freaking, you know, it made a mountain. <laughs> and all the actors were just standing there just staring like, oh my God. All of a sudden the 12 year old came out of all of us because we all grabbed one and started playing Star Wars. Just. <laughs> And that's something you're not going to hear about in the E! True Hollywood story or something like that. And another thing I got to share about this experience doing the movie Magic Mike is that uh, we shot it in two locations. We shot it in Hollywood and we shot it in um, Orlando, no, no, not Orlando, Tampa, Florida. And one of the scenes was shot on a sandbar, which most of you know already is a little tiny island with nothing on it. It's a little real small and people go there and they party. And so we get to this little island and uh, this guy with the headphones, his title is PA, personal assistant, the director, and he comes over and he tells us, listen guys, we're gonna be here for a couple of hours. If you need to use the facilities, these are your options. There's no plumbing here. You can either go in the water or you can go to those bushes over there. It's up to you. And I'm like, I'm fine. I already went. Two hours, no problem. Four hours later. What do you need? Listen, bro, you guys said we were only gonna be here for like two hours. It's going on five. My stomach is killing me. What's the story? We're gonna be here for like another three. The director has some more shots. Oh, you have your options. Thanks. So the first thing I look at is the water, okay? 
And to put it into perspective for you guys, the water's like right there, okay? And all the actors are like, like, like right there, okay? <laughs> so it's like, are you kidding me? I'm not gonna go pop a squat in the water in front of all those actors just so somebody can walk by and go, Fluffy's killing fishes. <laughs> no. So I take a stroll out to the bushes, right? So I start walking out to the bushes, my stomach is killing me. And fortunately, by the time I got there, my stomach had settled. So I no longer had to go number two. But since I was there, you know, <laughs> go make it rain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm in the bushes and I'm doing my thing and all of a sudden I start hearing noises. Just <laughs> and you know how you could just feel when somebody's standing like right next to you? And I couldn't turn around because, you know, I was doing my thing. All of a sudden, I see a shadow. A long shadow. <laughs> and it's coming in my direction. And I see that and I'm like, ha ha, funny Joe, that's funny. All of a sudden that shadow started to pee. And I was like, oh my God, it's real. Now curiosity has me. I gotta find out who the hell the owner. So really quick, I'm just like, you know, who? Oh my God. All right.